November 18th, 2006. They that uh, shall live in infamy as Western Carolina collects a check and a 62-0 beatdown from Urban Meyer's Gators who get a breather between the conference schedule and Florida State. The November SEC de facto scrimmage is born. It grew quickly. It's an art form almost exclusive to the SEC. You recall classics featuring the likes of Charleston Southern, Eastern Kentucky, Northern Arizona, Georgia State, Sanford, Alabama A&M, Tennessee Tech, UT Martin, and UT Chattanooga. Of course, a year ago this week, Georgia Southern went to the swamp and did stun Georgia, giving license to all the SEC coaches <laughs> to talk up the virtues, the worthiness of today's opponents. South Alabama, the Jaguars are a very good team. Playing a, uh, a very good 1AA team in, Sa in Sanford. Charleston Southern Buccaneers, a program that's really being taken to new heights. Western Carolina, uh, I think, is a much, much improved team. Play Eastern Kentucky, they're a playoff team in 1AA or whatever we call that now. It's why people get beat. They start thinking something different other than get your tail ready for a, a war. This is one of the best teams from that conference uh, probably to come in here. We, we've really got to play well. I've said it before, and I mean it, that uh, it's hard to beat teams that are used to winning. And this team has got the fever when it comes to winning. We're looking forward to it. we got a tough opponent. The South Alabama Jaguars are a good team. Say it. If they keep a straight face. If they beat the Jaguars, they get bowl eligible. Oh. Now, look, we, we're come here on. celebrating two proud programs in the FCS. We're not trying to belittle that division, but when you're in the SEC and you're in the thick of a conference race and you pause and you play these kinds of glorified scrimmages yeah. to get your guys healthy, it's not good for the sport. That's a fact. That's why most conferences don't allow you to do that. You can't do that in the Pac-12. Big. You can't play them in November when you're supposed to be building. And if you have a buy like that in the middle of your schedule, that makes your schedule not as strong as you might think it is when you yeah, have you play basically 11 games. Let me tell you, from a coach's standpoint, you love it. You get to beat somebody up the week before you play a rival, and it, most of all, for morale, you get to play some of your reserves. You spend extra time getting ready for the rival the next week, and they love it. They love it, except they couldn't remember that kid. <laughs> they were looking down. Who we played against? Yeah, yeah, uh, we did. Yeah. That's why they love it. Coaches love it. I'm not buying that. Well, I, what do you think? I love it. I, you love it? Yeah, sure, because I was always the week in porn. <laughs> He's always trying to get this a win. Is, but this is, just take a bye. No. If you're looking to just recoup and get healthy and get ready for a big game, why not just take a bye? Why, why play Alabama A&M? Because you have to, you get the number of games. This is the worst thing for, and I know the SEC, the conference games are tough and, and they, they get challenged every week. This is the worst thing that goes on in college football. And, and no due respect to the FCS and what they're doing, but, but it's just in an era where we just got done talking about the committee and what they look at. When you play teams like this and you get to the end of the year and you're going up and the committee's looking at, well, here's their schedule and here's their schedule. To me, there should be a penalty. You, you should lose every debate when you play in games like this. And we need to eliminate these kind of games when it comes to the non-conference. They're not good for the FCS schools. They're not good for the SEC schools or any other schools that play them. It's just, it's just bad for the game. I we absolutely have no games hate this it. weekend. I hate it. You're right. I hate it. We're in the, we have yeah. three weeks left. We're in the middle of November. We got no games to yeah, talk exactly. about. Exactly. It's ridiculous. Pathetic. For me. No, you know, we talked about it yesterday on College Football Live. I understand when you take an opponent like this early in the season because it's like a preseason kind game of, for you. Kind kind of. Of. I don't even yeah, get it. Early in the season. But, you know, because personally, I hate that too because in my yeah. non-conference schedule not when we played, yeah. we never played teams Absolutely. like that. So I absolutely hate it. And I agree with Kirk 100%. You take games like this in November, I think with the new college football playoff system, you should be penalized for something like this. I really do. I think if you're going to just take a bye, just have be idle that week, like TCU is this week. But don't just take a game like this. It's, to me, it's just, it's, it's just disrespectful. It really is to the fans. All right, I got to remember one thing. Most of these non-conference non games? games, they make a whole season financially. 
that yeah. runs their program because they get the money I, off again. But you know, small well, schools. Yes, yeah, we, we've yeah, got enough money right. now with all the money with the playoff. If if it's about money, then yeah, just, give, yeah. give them the money, yeah. but don't schedule them. Huh? Just don't schedule them. <laughs> <laughs> give, exactly. give them money. <laughs> you can't <laughs> give them money. <laughs> Ryan Denny, by the way, not a sellout. Even they tried to make the Catamounts homecoming, get people in there, still didn't sell it out.